A mysterious disappearance may lead us down a path of the paranormal. And then we take a look at an email I got. No, not a story request, not really. Someone sent me an email about a product of theirs, assuming I would probably have a glowing review for it. But their mistake led me down a very, very bizarre path. It makes me question a lot of things about society. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. You know what? I have this new drink here. It's called Koyos. Oh, sorry. It actually has a pronunciation key on the can. Koyos. Titan of Intelligence. It's apparently this drink that has like one carb in it. Because I'm on that keto thing. It also has nootropics, electrolytes, coconut MCT oil, brain support. This is a pear guava flavor. Now, obviously, I'm not being sponsored by these guys. So I'm going to try this, though, because I've always been curious about nootropics and stuff that I can drink on a keto diet. Let's see what this tastes like. I haven't had this before. Do a little review. Because, you know, it's it's scientific. It fits the, the show, right? Well, you know, I've never had guava before, and I ate, I've only eaten one pear my entire life. So for all I know, this tastes exactly like pear guava, but um, it's okay. That's my review. Now let's go on with the show. Mm. It doesn't taste that good at all, actually. Um, But let's see if it makes me smarter. Titan of intelligence. So our first story we're going to talk about. You're driving down the road. It's 1989. You're listening to Straight Up by Paula Abdul. Number one hit song. You're loving it. Straight up now tell me do you. And you're driving down the road. Now, in real life, your name would have been Carol Heights. But just for the sake of the story, you are Carol Heights. I don't know if Carol was listening to Straight Up. Probably was. It was a great song. Driving down the road. It's 1989. April 20th, 1989. It's a little bit after 8 o'clock. You're driving through Montana. And... There's a car in front of you. You're just lazily going down the road. Oh, oh, oh. And then you see the car in front of you swerve to the side of the road very quickly. You don't have time to respond. Another car is coming right at you. (laughs) Head on collision between the two cars. On a freeway, this wasn't like a backcountry road. You stagger out of your car. (sighs) Uh, moving the door aside, you fall off into the dirt. Off uh, very dramatically, Carol just kind of stood out of the car. The car's not totaled, but anyways, in our version of the story, you escape from your burning car. You reach in to save your Paula Abdul tape. You pull it out at the last minute. You get freeze. The car poof, explodes. In real life, though, it was just a head-on collision. It was bad, but it wasn't life-threatening bad. So you get out of your car, and in the other car, you see a young blonde woman sitting behind the wheel. She's also still alive, and you're like. Whew. And you're like, okay, cool, I'm a, I survived, she survived, my cassette survived, everything's fine. But the blonde woman starts to walk, this is all a true story, by the way, I'm not just making this up. The blonde woman walks up to you, just wanted to put you in the story, not saying a word, just staring at you the whole time. Not even staring at you, she's staring through you. And you're like, is everything okay? Are you, hey, listen, are you okay? We just had this big... First off, why were you driving on the wrong side of the road should be my first question, but are you okay? And the woman who was in the other car, her name was Patricia Meehan. She's simply just staring through you. Now, at this point, the car that was in front of you that swerved out of the way, it was a a man and his adult daughter. They get out of the car. And they're like, hey, sorry that, I mean, we saw saw her driving down the wrong side of the road. We swerved out of the way and you didn't have time to react. You're like, yeah, 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 no problem. We'll exchange insurance information later. What's up with this girl? And at that point, Patricia walked over to, like, the side of the road, climbed the fence. I don't know, imagine how high it was. I don't think it was, like, an eight foot. I don't think she scurried up at, like, a caterpillar. But she climbed this, she scaled this fence, turned around, and then stared at you, the two other people, and the car accident, and just stood there. And the man who was in the other car that avoided the accident, he said it. she had this look on her face like... She had just shown up in a car accident. 
Like, it didn't happen to her that she was simply a spectator. Like, she was rubbernecking. Like, if you were walking down the street and you saw a car accident, you'd kind of have that look on your face. Like, I wonder what happened there. I wonder what's going on. He said that's what she looked like. That she looked like she had nothing to do with it. She was just standing there. So at this point, the three people who aren't this crazy woman are really concerned. And they're just watching her on the other side of this fence, just staring at them and, like, staring at the accident. And then she just turns after a while and starts walking off into the darkness. Now, at this point, again, it's about 8.15, 8.20. It's getting dark. So the daughter of the man who was in the other car, she goes to get help. And the father and the you, (laughs) the the, the you, stay there and discuss it and try to figure out what's going on. I'm totally fine, but what was up with that chick climbing that fence? She scurried up like she was Spider-Man, stood there like she had never seen this car accident before, even though she was in it, just walked away. The police show up, the ambulances show up, everyone's fine, but the police immediately begin searching for this woman. They want to find out where she's at, not just because she's wandering around in the wilderness, but because she caused a head-on collision. They don't know what's going on. They find a trail of tennis shoe footprints, which they believe matched hers, because at this point, they were able to run DMV check and all that stuff, and they know they're looking for a woman named Patricia Meehan. They know, you know, like from her mom, like how much she weighs and her physical description and things like that. The accident started at 8.15 until 3 a.m. They were following this trail of footprints. And then eventually the footprints just kind of faded off into the wilderness. And they started, the cops are like, man, that was weird. Like, that was a really long trail to follow. And then eventually there was just nothing. So they started to backtrack and they came up with two possible scenarios. One, she hitchhiked to get away from the scene. But people are like, That was weird because she was walking away from the freeway. The second one, which was there was a hay truck about half a mile away from the accident. And they're thinking, well, maybe she hid in that hay truck. And I'm thinking, what? Again, like how many Looney Tune type escapades happen in real life? Like, do people really crawl into the back of hay trucks? Like, it is a cartoon. And like hillbillies are just driving around and you're like peeking out the back and you're like swatting chickens. Like, I guess people really do that. If the cops are like, well, maybe that's what happened. Whether or not she went on a Tom Sawyer-esque adventure in the back of a hay truck with two hillbillies trying to find Uncle Pirate's gold, we don't know. What we do know is between the time of 1989 when this happened and 1994, there were 5,000 sightings of Patricia Meehan across the U.S., pretty much from Minnesota to Washington. People were seeing this woman. Now... You could say probably about half of those were mistaken. They just saw a blonde woman walking down the street and they were like, Patricia? But there were actually multiple times where people interacted with with a woman who bore a striking resemblance to Patricia Meehan. This was a big case back then. Her family was putting out flyers. They hired like helicopter pilots to fly around looking for her. People were thinking she might have had amnesia from the car accident. The mom said she was suffering from depression. And the day... After, like, she, the accident happened on a, she was supposed to be at a psychologist appointment on the 21st. So she was in treatment for some issues with depression. However, she lived in Bozeman, Montana. This accident happened in Circle, Montana, which was 400 miles away. And the, pol- the police couldn't figure out why she was that far away. The parents couldn't explain why she was that far away. She simply was. You have a missing person case a lot of times you will have sightings like there's been sightings of madeline mccann here madeline mccann here i don't think anything close to five thousand sightings in a four-year span and i don't think anything close where law enforcement has actually intervened to check as well or family members go no 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 that was her that was a legit sighting of her let's go let's put on our paranormal caps here let's put on our paranormal glasses actually and look at the story a little closer you're driving a car You get in a horrible car accident, and you walk away from it. Sometimes that can be luck, or fate, or God, whatever. But there's always that idea of a thing called quantum immortality. But it's the fact that when you die, you don't actually lose consciousness. You shift into another reality where you didn't die. Now, to the observer in the next universe, they would just see you barely get away with your life and go, Whoa, that was close. And you wouldn't notice that you had died either. Because your consciousness can't comprehend something where you don't exist. But even nature has glitches. Everything has glitches. 
We have perfect reproduction systems, but every so often there are glitches in the reproductive systems and it can cause birth defects or stillbirths and things like that. But for the most part across the species, reproduction is a natural thing that happens normally most of the time. But there are sometimes flaws. Extrapolating that, it's possible that the same thing could happen with death. Where the car accident... She technically died in, but she shifted to our reality where she didn't die in. But, again, this is a little crazy, it's a little creepy. But not, this is my hypothesis, and I'm not trying to be, like, make light of this missing woman. I know the family's suffering from it, and all that stuff. I just think it's an interesting story with a possible paranormal answer. And I don't know if this is true, I'm really, I just, when I read this article, this is what kind of popped in my head. She gets in the car accident. She shifts to our reality where she's not dead. In her old reality, she had died at the point of the car accident. Now she's in a reality where she's not dead. But what happened as well was not only did she shift, but there was a glitch and multiple versions of her shifted into this reality. In the sense that when she got out of the car, that wasn't the person who got in the car, getting in the car accident, shifting to a reality where she didn't die in the car accident. That was a version of Patricia Meehan who never drove that day. And that's why she was looking at it like she had never seen it before. She gets out of a vehicle, but two seconds ago, she was sitting on her couch at home waiting to go to a psychologist appointment the next morning. But then everything shifted so quickly that she jumps realities basically into one where she's not sitting on the couch she's standing outside a car accident and she's looking at it and she's like what am i doing here why is my car totaled where am i who are these people she climbs the fence probably to get away from them or that's just a weird detail i didn't factor into my hypothesis and she walks away because she's completely disoriented and all the sightings, all the multiple sightings of all these other Patricia Meehans would be people who were suffering from depression in their original reality that have all been shifted into a reality where they're just homeless, transient women walking through the Midwest and the Northwest. Is any of that true? I don't know. I don't know. Could it possibly give any peace to the family of this missing girl? Absolutely not. It's actually borderline, it's borderline tasteless. But we live in a weird world. What you are doing one minute may become drastically different than what you're doing the next. Sometimes you can plan for that when you're driving down a dark road at night. You can be aware of a catastrophe that may happen. But if you're in a reality where you were just enjoying a beautiful sunset, and the next thing you know you wake up in a world covered in twisted metal and smoke as you crawl out of your vehicle, where would you go for answers? Now, after that grim ending, let's go ahead and move on to our next segment. Now, our next segment, actually, I guess I get junk emails. Everyone gets junk emails, but I get junk emails specifically to my deadrabbitradio at gmail.com account. And so they tend to be a little weirder, like I got invited to join the Illuminati. Actually, that was a comment on YouTube, but I've gotten some weird stuff, book reviews and things like that. So I didn't check my email all throughout my break. And as my break was winding down, I thought, I better see if anyone sending me stuff. And I got this little nugget here. No pun intended. That's not a pun, actually. Okay, so this was an email. It's from Sharon J. Now, some of you people are going to know what this term is right off the bat. I didn't. I had to research it. But if you know what it is, then you can start snickering already. Here's the email. Hello. I really visit your blog repeatedly and read all your posts, which are very interesting. So right there, I knew that this was some sort of scam because I don't have a blog. Next sentence. Yanni Eggs is one of our site... And we constantly work a lot to make it more interesting for our site visitors. It is all about yawny eggs and health benefits for women. We recently provide a free complete infographics, whatever that means, about improved sensual and physical joy by yawny eggs. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, I don't know what yawny eggs are. It's obviously some sort of scam because this email is garbage. And I'm assuming at this point that it's some sort of like necklace, like in the shape of an egg, maybe a ring. Maybe a a edible product, because it's eggs. Something egg-shaped. I wonder if they picked up on it because of my eggless travel episode, but something egg-like. I had no idea that these things are incredibly popular. And there is a ch- there is actually a very good chance that at some point in my life, I have had a conversation with a woman while she was using a Yanni egg. So what's a Yanni? <laughs> 
So what is a Yanni egg? Well, a Yanni egg, and the bo- this part's going to get non-safe for work. So I assume that if you're listening to this at work, now it's time to either shut it off, and I'll see you tomorrow, or put on headphones. So a Yanni egg is a... It's an egg-shaped object made of stone. So they have them made out of obsidian, jade, and quartz. And you shove it up your pussy, basically. Like, I, your vagina, I guess, would be a better word for it. But it is... It was not a better word, it's the actual word, but it's an egg made of stone that you put inside of you if you're a woman. There are more, mul- I went to this website, there are multiple things saying do not use rectally. Do not put it up your butthole. So sorry guys. So the Yanni egg is this rock, an egg-shaped rock, that you slide inside of you. So obviously your my first question was, Why? Why would you do this? I'm thinking at first, like, it's to get off. It must be some sort of sex thing. You put it up there, and then you just kind of walk around, and it feels like you're constantly full. Let me also say this right now. I have, and I might have talked about this before, but my knowledge of the female reproductive system is as much as I need to have sex. That's it. I don't really know much else what's going on there. Whenever I look at pictures of, like, you know that everyone's seen that famous drawing of like the fallopian tube in the uterus and it looks like a goat head? It looks like a monster. Um, the drawing, the drawing, not the uterus itself. I don't know what those look like. But anyway, so that thing, like that vase-shaped thing and all that, I don't know really how I get how like if you bang a chick and you come inside of her, it goes up into the, or the eggs come down. I was actually remembering once I was talking to this, I was talking to Lana actually. We were talking about like reproductive systems and I was like, Oh, yeah, you know, like, sperm's better than eggs because, like, you the sperm, like, the egg is just floating around and the sperm goes in it and then, like, it grows. And she's like, what? And this conversation was, like, six years ago. I wasn't 12. I was like, yeah, like, the egg is, like, the little nest that the sperm goes into and it, like, grows. Like, the egg is basically just the bed for the sperm. And she's looking at me in disbelief and she goes, talking to you? is like talking to a scientist from the 1800s. She goes, I, that's so far off basis of how the reproductive system works. She goes, talking to you, it seems like you expect that if you looked at sperm through a microscope, you would see a little guy in the sperm with like a top hat and a cane. She goes, it's totally not how it works. Like the egg is not simply a bed. And I was like, I don't know. I really only know enough that I can physically have sex. Everything else after that, I'm really not concerned about. That all being said... Where was I going with this? Oh, oh, yeah. So I don't understand how the female body works inside. My thing is, what is a yawn? Like, you put a yawny egg up in there. It has to be sexual. There can't really be any other reason for it, right? Well, it turns out that the yawny egg, and yawny actually apparently means vagina, or one of the million words that means vagina. Uh, in the, I know that sheath means vagina. I know that. But so you put it up there. And you basically hold it with your muscles, your little vaginal muscles, your muscle walls in there. And it helps you have better orgasms. It makes you tighter. It increases lubrication for you. It increases lubrication at any age, according to this website. So you could be 108 and just still be like dripping wet if you have the right stone in you. Some moms, this was a quote, some moms use Yanni eggs to assist in afterbirth recovery. Now, again, don't know much about female reproductive organs. But I do know that women tend to shred open during birth. Big gash down there. I don't recommend putting eggs in there now, to be fair. I don't think they're putting stones in right after the baby comes out. I don't think the baby comes out and the woman's like, okay, hand me my stones. And the doctor's like, what are you putting in there? No, no. And she's just sliding these rocks inside of her. But anyways, that's what it says on the website. So that's real, and the reason why they're like, oh, but it also because it's jade or quartz or obsidian. The obsidian ones are the really heavy ones too. They're like, don't buy an obsidian one right off the bat, because you'll <laughs> because their vaginal walls aren't strong enough that if you put in a, a rock that's too heavy for you, <laughs> it just falls out. Clunk, 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 rolling on the ground. People are like, what was that? And she's like, oh, sorry. Oh, I have to move to my medium egg. But anyway, so they put that's what it is. And the fact that it's like obsidian or quartz or jade also centers the energies, the chakras in your body. See, according to this website, a lot of your emotional stress is accumulates in your yoni, 
in your vagina and it basically like can cause negative uh, oddly Scientologist in this part but like these negative energies can like attach to your body and specifically in your vagina walls and so if you strengthen your vagina walls you're actually releasing all this negative energy out of your body so that's another reason why you should give this to spiritually cleanse yourself one of the quotes so I'm reading this website and I'm like this is just nonsense but it's hilarious nonsense one of the quotes was the Yanni egg isn't just an exquisite accessory that will add charm to your nightstand. I don't recommend leaving stuff out that you put inside of your body on your nightstand. I especially don't recommend doing it after you've given birth because that means you have kids, which means that kids are going to go like, hey, let's go play with mommy's magic rock. It's a bad idea, especially because if they go out, play with it in the mud. There's actually an advertisement for these things that involve the Easter bunny in an Easter basket. They show like an Easter basket and they're like, they have their eggs. Get yours today. And it was a little picture of a Yanni egg. And I'm thinking that is the grossest advertising possible. Because now I'm thinking of kids hiding chocolate-covered eggs in the grass. Or not hiding them, finding them. And then mommy being like, oh, I have a special egg that only I can. Like, why would you put that? Why would you combine that? But anyways, don't leave it out. on. If you happen to have one of these, don't leave it out on your nightstand. Don't people like, oh, that's a really exquisite little rock. Where'd you get that jade rock? And they're like picking it up, playing with it. You're like, why is it so slippery? Woof, woof, blunk, blunk, dunk. It rolls on the ground. So anyways, let's go to the frequently asked questions, which is always the best part of these websites. I love quack medicine and stupid inventions and stuff like that. And frequently asked questions really do give you an insight into what people are asking them. Really, the first ones are pretty logistical. Which size is the right fit for me? And this is where it explains that you would think that... Like weights, I start off with small weights, and then I move up to big weights, but it's different for the Ani egg. You actually want to have a bigger egg inside of you if you've given birth or you're over 50. And the reason why is because the exercise is not so much like weight training, but resistance. So you slide it up inside of you, and then you squeeze your vaginal muscles. Now, if you have weak vaginal muscles... They can't squeeze as much, so the bigger the rock, the easier it is to kind of like envelop like a face hugger around this little stone inside of you. If you have a smaller rock, it weighs less, but your vagina muscles, it'll just slip out. Now, they do say most women are fine with a medium-sized rock, but as you become an advanced practitioner, as you become an earthbender, you can actually take the smallest of the eggs and slide them up there, and your vagina walls just become like super skin tight on top of it like you're sucking all the air out of a ziploc bag you know like 20 of those little guys up there juggling them moving them around okay we also have the question how should i clean my yanni egg this is where you know the product was invented for women i don't know if it was invented by women but it was definitely they say that it's this ancient practice back from like ancient china and stuff like that but historians and anthropologists have said there's no record that these things are ever used in ancient china or really anywhere there's no record that these are actually used in any way other than modern times but how should i clean my yanni egg this is the instructions there's no man who has the patience or any of this stuff at home you have to wash it with natural organic non-scented soap for sensitive skin i didn't even know that stuff existed obviously i know there's there's organic soap like isn't all soap technically organic because it's made out of stuff like it's not there's not like chemical whatever anyways natural or isn't natural and organic the same thing natural organic non-scented soap for sensitive skin is how you clean it that would require me to take my phone so i had internet access to a grocery store to find it but there's a lot of women out there are like oh yes i know that brand pull it off their shelf you also this was my favorite part i've talked a lot about knowing adult women who just drink wine or drink alcohol all the time and it's totally socially acceptable It says to wipe the egg with vodka or hard liquor, not rubbing alcohol, though. It's very clear. Do not use rubbing alcohol. So I almost imagined the housewife sitting at home wiping the the egg off with a swab of vodka and being like, one shot for you, one shot for me, one shot for you, and then (laughs) you're like, Jason, I didn't know you were such a misogynist. But I'm just saying, this is guys don't have non-scented organic natural soap at home for the most part stereotype sure 
Oh, oh, and here's another little tip if you want to make it super powerful. Again, this is when you should realize that you're, they're selling you a load of junk. It's a rock you put inside of you that's supposed to strengthen your vaginal muscles. I can't even say that word anymore. And uh, align your chakras and do all this stuff, make orgasms better. But if you really want to charge it up, if you want it to work, the first day you get it, put it in a bowl full of sea salt, leave it out overnight facing the moon. I would love to go to a doctor and be like, hey, you know, I'm having some back problems. They're like, well, we do have this prescription. I'll give you seven day prescription for this Vicodin. But what we recommend is taking the Vicodin, getting an oleander plant, putting the pill, wrapping it in the flower leaves and leaving it to be taken away by the eastern tide on the 15th. You'd be like, what are you talking about? What type of nonsense is coming out of your mouth? If someone's selling you something that is like, yes, this will help you meditate, fine, whatever. But they're trying to make this be a physical change in your body. However, it's charged by the moon. Garbage. Garbage. Oh, yeah, i got to take another drink of my nootropics here. Yes, <laughs> I'm talking trash about this. I've been eyeing this Kios bottle the whole time. Kios bottle. How often should I wear the egg? Start off a couple minutes. You know, just like any exercise, you don't want to go full blown. You don't want to blow your walls out right away. But they recommend two to three hours a day, every day. And they say eventually you'll be able to work yourself up, a lot of women, leave it inside them for 12 hours. So here's the thing. There is a, these these are fairly popular. They were sold on Gwyneth Paltrow's healthy nonsense website called Goop. And they actually got involved in a lawsuit because they claimed all this medical stuff and state of California sued them. Goop settled out a court and offered refunds to all the people, but they still sell the eggs. They still sell them. They just don't claim that oh, they give you all these medical benefits. They just sell them, and women still buy them. 12 hours is a long time to have a foreign object in you. But again, this is why I'm saying it's probably pretty likely that at some point you have, whether or not you're a man or a woman, have had a conversation with a, a woman standing there holding a stone inside of her. They've sold hundreds of thousands of these things. It's possible. You're like, hey, how's it going? They're like, oh, yeah, it's going really good. Work's going good, stuff like that. And you're like, you seem unbelievably tense right now. Oh, no, 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 I'm doing fine. Just uh, holding some stuff in, you know, dealing with some problems. Oh, okay. I'll talk to you later. They do fall out. They actually say, you got to be careful when you go into the bathroom until, like, you have the, the skill to keep it inside of you. Because when you sit down and go to the bathroom, it'll fall in the toilet. So they give you the great advice that, as you're going to the bathroom, to have your hand ready to catch the yoni egg before it hits the toilet water. Big logistical problem with that. I'm pretty sure you're going to pee and poop on your hand. You might be able to keep the rock from going into the toilet bowl. But they didn't really think that one out. They didn't really think they went out. I thought, though, the funniest one was about almost all the way down the list for the frequently asked questions. They had this one. The egg is stuck. What should I do? I can guarantee that is the most frequently asked question. I can guarantee that that should have been at the very, very top of the list. The number one question people are asking is, oh, my God, I can't get it out. I can't get it out. Please help me. And they said, listen, there's no way that it can go up past your cervix, which again, I would need a map to find it anyways, but you can't go all the way past up the cervix, but they can't get stuck up there. And when we get stressed out, not we as in me, but we as in the women who bought this thing or just women in general, their walls tend to contract, which traps the egg and it's up there. But they're like, listen, people have had them up there for 24 hours. It's no big deal. Once you relax, it'll just roll on out of you. Like the Easter Bunny dropping one off. Now, that's not exactly what they said, but it was just relaxed. But again, I guarantee you that is the first, really the first frequently asked question. They also tell you, someone asks, a frequently asked question is, how do you insert it? And they're like, don't really use lube because the, you'll create your own lube anyways as you're using this. I guess you can have like a surplus of it. You're jarring your own lube, putting it for a rainy day. But... One of the techniques is they're like, relax your body. Give yourself a, a gentle breast massage using a silk scarf or a strip of fabric. Massage your nipples. Massage, start working your way down your body. Massage your inner thighs. Begin to touch your yoni. So basically just masturbate. Like they could have just said, someone could have said, so how do I enter this into me without lube? And they're like, just masturbate. Just masturbate, slide it in. You're good to go. Put on your panties, head off to work. 
That's really what they're telling you to do. In so many words. So, that's the Yanni egg. The conspiracy, I think, isn't so much that people are dumb enough to buy these things or that people are greedy enough to sell products that can actually really hurt someone. It really made me think that there is a secret society of women out there with eggs inside of them all the time. I mean, even if, let's say they sold a million of these and only half of the women use them on a regular basis, that's still 500,000 women spread out across the world with a rock inside of them. And honestly, talk about predictive programming. If there's anything that's going to get us ready for the reptilian overlords, it's going to be knowing that women around you have eggs in them and they can fall out at any given time. And so they keep buying these eggs and then dropping them off. You're in the office space. There's just eggs, wet eggs rolling around on the ground. You can't complain because then it'll seem like you're sexist, but you really can't complain because (laughs) the Yanni egg overlords are actually being directed by the reptilians. So the day that the shape-shifting reptilians (laughs) actually are dropping real eggs on the ground, we won't know the difference. We won't know the difference. Now, obviously, I don't think that the reptilians are in charge of the Yanni eggs. But I do find subcultures absolutely fascinating. And the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of women walking around with eggs they bought off the internet inside of them is flat out bizarre to me. To me, that is, that is more ridiculous than anything like Illuminati based because it's real. Because it's real. Because people have receipts. Companies can say how much of these they've shipped. They're all over the place. I feel like I've discovered real life pot people. You don't know who has the egg inside of them. Maybe they all do. Except you. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be your email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at jsnowcarpenter. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. <laughs>